And this show is brought to you by the generosity of Crushpad. Crushpad, the urban winery where you're the winemaker. Find out more information at www.crushpadwine.com. Every year, the wineries of Walla Walla Valley put on Vintage Walla Walla, a multi-day celebration featuring wine tasting, seminars, cooking demonstrations, and art showings. We stopped in to see what all the buzz was about. Walla Walla was predominantly known for its red wines. That was where it kind of really came on and came on board. We have some beautiful Merlots that we're consistently recognized for, as is with our Cabernets and our Syrahs. That has probably been our bedrock. But what we're also seeing with that is there's Viognier coming on door. There's some Petit Verdot in the valley. There's some Tempranillo in the valley. There's just a whole mix of blends that are really taking off as well. So it's fun. There is no longer going to be, I think, that feeling that all you can do is you know, go from one to the other, you're really going to have a smorgasbord of wines to choose from. In most everything in Walla Walla has always been about wheat, livestock, cattle, uh, pigs, maybe maybe some sheep. But of course, we also have these wonderful vegetable crops that we have here, like asparagus and the Walla Walla sweet onion and a lot of other vegetables. And now we even have organic farmers in Walla Walla. And I mean, the vegetables and the produce are fabulous. So we're going to see the same thing, I'm sure, in the wine grapes. That you got part of the Appalachian in another state. That's right. sort of unheard of in California, obviously. Yeah, they don't do that. But I mean, you see it in many other places. But I think if, if you look at premium wine growing around the United States, probably Walla Walla Valley is one of the only multi-state Appalachians that's had great success. Um, heat unit wise, this is the hottest place in Washington state for wine grape growing next to Red Mountain. So you definitely see full, rich, lush wines. My boss, Rick Small, planted uh, Chardonnay and Cabernet here in 1976. So this is all on his family's property that he's been a third generation farmer on. Where we are here, is essentially continental. So there actually are vineyards on the Oregon side of the Walla Walla Valley. It's the only AVA in the U.S. that actually splits a state border. So about 30% of the valley is in Oregon. Vineyards like Seven Hills, a lot of the cobblestone Syrah vineyards are actually on the Oregon side of the border. Another interesting thing about Washington is obviously we're much further north. Many people think of us as being too far north, but in terms of latitude, we're actually just above Bordeaux, just below Burgundy. As you know, the further north you get when you're into your summer months, the more sunshine you have. So a day is a good example. Uh, it was daylight at 4 o'clock this morning, and it'll be daylight at 10 o'clock tonight. And so we have those that long 17 to 18 hours of daylight every day creating this beautiful photosynthesis. And that photosynthesis is what is ultimately ripening the fruit. The other thing with Washington State just generally, but Walla Walla also, is that we have tremendous temperature swings. So right now where we're standing it's probably about 85 degrees. By August where we're standing it'll probably be 95 degrees at this time of the day but it will have cooled off to low 50s at night. So you have these 50 degree temperature swings. So with things like Merlot for example that are thin skinned that require acidity to give them that body that you need along with that physiological ripeness you don't sacrifice the acidity by baking them out all day. You get them really ripe, but then it cools at night and it holds that acidity. 2004, we had a pretty substantial freeze here in Walla Walla Valley. Where we're standing right now, and granted this is the top of the vineyard, but uh, just down at the winery, which is where those outbuildings are, uh, we were at 29 degrees below zero on January 8th of 2004. Because in Washington State we're on our own rootstocks, they take them to the ground. What that means is they'll, they'll chop them here at the ground, mm -hmm. And the roots are, are however old that vine is, seven years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever. So it's a big healthy rootstock and it'll send these sucker shoots up so they really only lose one harvest. Okay. So the following harvest, they'll take, they'll take those down to the wire and they'll have fruiting canes come off of them and you lose your one harvest. That's what happened in 04 with most of the Walla Walla Valley fruit. Well, we do have pests, but none, none that we really need to worry about rootstocks. That's one of the advantages of, of, Was of eastern Washington and, and us being able to grow our, our vines on their own rootstocks. Uh, we do have those winters, like the winter in 2003-2004, that um, it was minus 18 degrees in most of the vineyards around here. So because of that, phylloxera is not really an issue. To get, all we need is really three hard freezes per winter, and we get those. But because of our hard winters and our sandy, loamy, silty soils, we do not see phylloxera spreading. And as long as we can keep it at bay, we find that the quality of our wines is more varietally correct and more expressive 
uh, when we're on our own rootstocks. I think one of the things that really makes Washington stand out is our uh, geology. And we have a really unique geologic history here. Um, 15 million years ago, this was the largest volcanic activity of anywhere in the world. And the combination of, vol of volcanoes and just lava spewing from the earth created a, a, a base of basalt here that extends throughout eastern Washington and eastern Oregon. You cannot get muscovite mica in a basalt. So, you know, as a geologist standing here and looking at this, knowing we're on basalt bedrock, I look at this soil, I say, you're not from around here, are you? You know, this is, this is not native soil derived from our bedrock. This is washed in on a flood because it's loaded with a mineral that is not present in the underlying basalt. And we have about one mile from here, uh, what we call the Little Grand Canyon, where it shows these different, more than 40 different flood silts that were deposited here in the valley. And it's those glacially young, mineral rich soils that we grow our grapes on. So these are exotic soils. This is the famous Burlingame Canyon, also called the Little Grand Canyon. And each one of these layers, and then from here to here, this represents the deposit of one Missoula flood. The bottom material right here is sand. And see, it just drops out of my hand. I'll bring some up to show you. But it's just sand, sparkly sand. At our soils were, were largely deposited at the time of the Ice Age. These, there were these uh, gargantuan cataclysmic floods that inundated eastern Washington. Uh, where we're standing right here in the Walla Walla Valley, we would have had 600 feet of water on top of us. In the canyon here, there are 39 layers. And the top layer, the topmost layer, that comes down about three feet from the top is windblown silt. So that's the lus. And the lus comes down about two to three feet. And you can see uh, a brown, sort of organic rich layer in that. And then you go down into the graded beds. 